Honourable Member for Brampton East. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It's good to be back in Ottawa after a week travelling with the Finance Committee. Uh, but today's debate is a very pressing one. The changes our government is proposing uh, to enhance the Canada Pension Plan is important to every working Canadian. Not only are they important, they are much needed. We know that today, one in four families nearing retirement, that's 1.1 million families, risk not saving enough for retirement. In particular, middle-class families without workplace pension plans are at greater risk of under-saving for retirement. A third of these families are at severe risk. To address this, a historic agreement was reached with the provinces in June to make meaningful changes to the CPP that will allow Canadians to retire with more money in their pockets. To enhance, these enhancements will be phased in over a seven-year period starting in 2019. Once fully in place, the CPP enhancement will increase the maximum retirement benefit by about 50%. Enhanced benefits will accumulate gradually as individuals pay into the enhanced CPP. And to fund these enhanced benefits, annual CPP contributions will increase modestly over seven years starting in 2019. I want to remind my colleagues in the House that our contribution rates in Canada are much lower than those in other countries with public pension plans. In fact, the CPP contribution rate is about half the average rate amongst 25 countries in the OECD that have public pension plans. This remains true even with the CPP enhancement. But what does this mean to Canadians? What does it mean to a young worker in her 20s? And recently, I spoke to Canadians, and I spoke to 20-somethings, and they asked me, so what do we get out of this CPP enhancement? A worker nearing retirement asked me, will this change my pension benefit? A low-income worker worried that any extra contribution will come straight out of his paycheck. These are very good questions, Mr. Speaker. And for the young worker in her early 20s, just starting out her career, this will be a great benefit for when she retires. By paying into the enhanced CPP, she will have more to retire on. The modest increase in contributions will be phased in over seven years. So someone working with a constant earning of $50,000 will contribute an additional $70 per year or $6 per month in 2019. By the end of the phase-in period, that same person will be contributing $475 per year or $40 extra per month. By strengthening the Canadian Pension Plan, workers will receive more money from their pension, exactly one quarter of their eligible earnings to one third of their eligible earnings. So if a person makes $50,000 a year for their working life, they will receive about $16,000 each year in retirement instead of $12,000 today. That's $4,000 more dollars right into their pockets. In addition, the enhancement will increase the point at which a person stops making contributions by about 14% in 2025. I know that some are concerned about the increased contributions and what they will mean to their bottom line, most importantly, their paycheck. We thought about this and designed a gradual phasing so that contributions will increase modestly over seven years. <laughs> we also thought about employers in designing the enhanced CPP. We specifically designed a slow phasing of the annual CPP contributions with the express purpose of minimizing the impact and, given, and giving employees and employers time to adjust to these new changes. The great news is, for our young workers, we'll see the largest increase in their retirement benefits. In fact, we know that young people, in general, find it difficult to save. Many are working in jobs that don't have company pension plans, which means they have to save on their retirement for their retirement on their own. The fact is that a tax deduction instead of a tax credit will be provided to the employee contribution portion of the enhanced CPP. This will avoid new CPP contributions increasing the cost of savings. For the worker in the middle of his career or nearing retirement, he will still benefit from our enhanced CPP as the increased contributions that are made in 2019 
and later will go towards an enhanced retirement pension plan. But what about the low-income worker who is worried about the effect of increased CPP contributions on his paycheck? Well, how will the enhanced CPP help him? I want to assure my colleagues and low-income workers all across this country that an enhanced CPP will benefit all workers, including those with low incomes. In order to make sure low-income workers aren't financially burdened as a result of these extra contributions, the government will also enhance the working income tax benefit. The proposed enhancement to the working income tax benefit is designed to provide additional benefits that roughly offset the incremental CPP contributions for eligible low-income workers. So with this enhancement, there will be no impact on disposable income and, sorry, there will be no impact on disposable income and when he retires, he will also get a larger retirement benefit payment. The bottom line, Mr. Speaker, is if you're working in Canada and you're paying into the CPP and you plan to retire after 2019, you will have more money in your pocket from our CPP retirement pension benefit. Mr. Speaker, in my riding of Brampton East, day in and day out, I speak to my constituents who call me personally about the issues that they face and their families face. I often hear that young Canadians have a hard time finding permanent employment and are worried about their financial future and outlook and saving for retirement. I hear from young families and established families alike who are thinking of retirement and realizing that they do not have adequate savings. This concerns me. This concerns many of us in this House. The Canadian Association of Retired Persons estimates that roughly 600,000 seniors are living in poverty in Canada today. That's more than the entire population of the city of Brampton. That is, frankly, Mr. Speaker, unacceptable. Our government is doing its part to ensure that in the future, no seniors will be living in poverty. We started by reversing the, eligible, the eligibility age of the old age security to 65 and boosting the general guaranteed income supplement, the GIS, by 10% to provide almost $1,000 per year more per GIS recipient, aimed especially at helping low-income seniors who live alone. However, that is not enough. Associations like CARP have been calling for a CPP expansion for years, and it's about time that we deliver. We feel that this is a win-win, Mr. Speaker. I urge my honorable colleagues to support and enhance CPP. It will further help Canadians contribute to a safe, and secure retirement. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.